since 2016 that we've been club champions. There were about 40 winners countrywide um, uh, of people that race our birds. Valid topics in pigeon racing at the moment is where's South African pigeon racing going? I'm Steer Painter and this is my eldest son Richard. My youngest son Enrique unfortunately can't, can't be here today but um, thank you very much again for visiting us and for the opportunity to have a word with you. It's, indeed, it is always an honor to have you guys. Thank you for what you're doing for the sport in South Africa. Um, to kick it off, um, as we all know, this series is regarding club champions in South Africa. And I think it's great that you're giving um, recognition to guys that do well at club level because that is where the sport is practiced in its basic format. Um, you first belong to your club and that is where you know the birds get basketed the results get published and um, all the hard work gets done so last year um, we were club champions again as deep painters um, but what made me more proud than anything else was the fact that Richard at his loft um, it's only his second year run yeah, second racing year. and um, he basically, the, f the first year he had no old birds and last year he had just had a handful, probably yeah. about 15 old birds. But uh, he ended up second in the overall points in our club. And uh, that is a fantastic achievement if you think he only raced with about 50 birds. I saw one of the questions you wanted answered was whether this is the first time that we've been club champion. Um, it's actually the eighth time in a row since 2016 that we've been club champions. And previous to that, in my previous clubs in Krugerstorp, uh, we were club champion another five, six times. Um, so it's something to be very proud of. Um, but obviously the focus and uh, emphasis for us is to do well uh, at union level and at combine level. We, I'm happy to report last week we were union champions uh, again. For a long time Richard yeah. was lying second in the union as well so that tells us a lot about the depth in, in, in our stock loft. Um, last year in total we raced from our loft 98 races and I think from Richard's loft about uh, 45, 50 races. Oh, okay. But between the two lofts we had 57 first places last year at club level and I think 17 at union level. Um, okay, I was second um, in the overall club points, fourth in the union points. Um, I think that speaks well towards the depth out of our stock loft because um, it's not only our main the, the painter's loft that's doing well, but a lot of lo lofts around the country has our birds and is following our program and they also do very well. I think also tell them about uh, your hen by the number of 564. Oh, yeah. I, I had the privilege to fly in um, 564. She was best bird in the club um, and the best um, open bird in the union and in the combine. The bloodline is she's the daughter of this beautiful hen on the yeah. painting, um, the famous SK hen. And um, her father also bred, um, she's actually a full sister of the bird that the previous year flew eighth in the final at Africa Pro. So that's a blend of what we these days call the painters' birds because it's the basis is my father's uh, old family which won Sun City in 2001 but we've brought in new blood. Um, the four pillars of the raft at the moment is Blue Whip uh, who's a painter patry, then there's Quinn and Kaas who's a Kaas poor. Then the two hens is the famous Eska hen, her bloodlines are Sablon Herbots. And then we've got the 17th time winner, which is a blend of Koopman and Van Leeuwen bloodlines. Um, and the blend of those four pillars, I think at the moment, probably responsible for 85 to 90% of our top performances.
Okay, this is 255. Um, she was the best young bird in the club last year and third best bird in the union. Uh, this hen raised, was bred in January 22 and already in 22 season she was a winner, uh, equal union winner. She was just beaten by a loft mate. And last year I think she scored in the first 20 four or five times and in total she scored 14 times in the first 100 in the union. Um, she's out of our famous diamond pair, Quinn and Cross, mm -hmm. and the 17 time winner. And once again, you can see how far she is progressed with the malt. We're standing on the 22nd of February, and she's basically finished the malting. Okay, here's one of our top performing cocks of last year, 1 through 1 at 4. He's um, a two time union winner, and um, yeah, very versatile pigeon, can do very well on the, the short distances, but also want to race uh, further down the line at about 650 k's. Um, he was breeding until the middle of January, so it's about a month now that he's been separated. But you can see also, he's already finished with the molting. He's uh, growing out his number 10 flight, and uh, he's getting to the point where he's nearly done with the body molt as well. Our selection is we try every year to become more strict. So the past year, uh, the birds that remained in the racing team had to have flown at least twice in the top 10 of the union, which is more or less a thousand pigeons that they fly against. So that is the top 1% or even better, and they have to do it twice. Otherwise, they must make space for the new breed for the next year. And if you can do that consistently over a specific, you know, over an elongated period of time, you fly better and better, and anybody yeah. can can do that. So um, to speak a little bit about our breeding strategy, uh, and then later on about the training strategy, is that we look to to breed from um, the best races of the previous year, usually breed our best races of the next year. However, obviously in the stock loft. Um, the established um, cocks and hens that's bred well over the last couple of years also breed. So we try and focus on what I said earlier regarding the top 10 in the union. So our breeding strategy in terms of its timing I think is quite interesting. Um, we breed a, a big portion of our young birds in January to March, which I think is quite different to many other lofts. Uh, we're in a fortunate position that our union issues the rings on the 1st of January. So we try and breed about 60 babies from January through to March, which we then train very lightly uh, during the first part of the season. But from about August, we race them on our sprint series. And if they are good performance, we even race them up to 600 kilometers. The following year, when they then can uh, compete as young birds, those birds are experienced, stay strong, and you know, obviously, uh, you have very few problems with them. Um, we still breed for ourselves uh, in September to December, but it's virtually only our sail rings and some derby rings that we ring that during that period of time. To talk about the training, um, I think training and feeding and keeping birds healthy, you know, go hand in hand. Um, I think our feeding strategy is, is well known that we make use of pellets um, as our basis. It's not only pellets, but we uh, use that as our basis. And uh, during this part of the season where we, within about two weeks from now, we're going to start training, uh, we, we feed the races uh, a mix of pellets and sunflower mainly. And that, you know, basically a system to go through the malt very quickly. Okay, so um, to talk a little bit about the upcoming season, I think we're in a very fortunate position where we've got a recipe, we've got a system that gives good results year after year. So we don't mess around changing it a lot. By that, I don't want to say that we don't experiment with new things, but the basic things stay the same. Our expectations for the season, we always want to do better, you know, and it's a privilege to, to win the union points, but it is very hard. It really is very hard to do that. And to do that more than once is even harder, and to do that year after year, 
uh, like we've been fortunate to win the union points four times in the last five years uh, and the, the, the combine points we've been fortunate to be champion three years in a row and then last year we were fourth yeah. uh, we're very fortunate that we can fly in two unions so we basically race six races, yeah, six races every weekend um, but to pick the, the right pigeons for the right team uh, you know, at the highest level in the WRRPA and the Gauteng West Combine, the competition is incredibly high. I mean, this year I think the WRRPA has five or six members yeah. getting Sandpo medals. Um, so per capita, I don't think it is, there's many unions that can say that, that um, their guys perform at that level. Uh, oh, so many of them perform at that level. So to be union champion in the WRRPA is a huge honour. Um, and it's always will and will will be and will remain our main focus uh, in terms of what we do with the pigeons. Having said that, um, as Richard mentioned earlier, the fact that our pigeons are doing so well across the country, you know, is very gratifying. Last year, again, uh, in the very strong competition in the Cape in the Federated Board, we had uh, I think two truck winners, and in the car competition. A friend of ours scored first in consecutive legs of the car race with, you know, with, with a pure painter. And things like that makes us feel very good. Last year, there were about 40 winners countrywide um, uh, of people that race our birds. And the fact that they're performing in basically every province where they race says a lot about their versatility, that they can do well under different conditions. So for the coming season... Our focus is obviously to try and stay at the top in the WRPA and in the PSWU where we ended second only with a few points. We want to try and, and be first. Uh, you know, obviously yeah. it's not a given that it will be, but that's something we aspire to every year. We're very competitive. We, you know, everything for us is focused on, on taking the first prize. Uh, it's a blessing that we have very good birds and that, you know, the birds bring their part. I mean, we do the training, but the genetics uh, deliver the, the results. You know, one of the, I think, valid topics in pigeon racing at the moment is where's South African pigeon racing going? And there's a lot of negativity and pessimism about um, us losing fanciers, etc. I actually look at it a little bit differently. I think the, the sport's actually growing. And if I look at the amount of money that gets spent in the pigeon market. Um, I did my own calculations and I guess between the end of August last year and until about a week ago, say middle of February, I guess somewhere between three and 4,000 pigeons were sold on internet platforms or WhatsApp platforms in South Africa at an average price of about three and a half thousand rand. So, <laughs> That's a lot of money. You know, you're talking about 15 to 20 million rand that gets spent by South Africans on pigeons. What we need to look at is how do we get more people to take part in the sport? And I firmly believe that we need to start looking at getting a portion of all of that revenue that gets spent and put that into the development of, of pigeon racing. I think one of the main problems in South Africa is, is that Guys who race professionally like ourselves, and you know, there are many in basically every union, you get two or three or maybe ten guys that really race at the highest level. Um, the problem is, is that it's getting to a point where those guys start winning more and more, and the guys that are starting out or battling are winning less and less, and that kills the sport. We need to find a way to create more winners in the sport. And you know, I'm of the view that. Pigeon racing needs, the, the administration needs to become more professional. You know, like any other sport, maybe have leagues where, you know, I look at the, at cricket and soccer and rugby. You've got clubs playing against each other, provinces playing against each other, and then there's international competition. You can't expect a guy that's just starting out with a sport to compete against the champions. Um, and keep him interested. Pigeon racing is very expensive. And so you've got to give that guy an incentive to get through year one, get through year two, do the experience, but at the same time get pleasure of winning. 
maybe against his own peers to start off and later progressing upwards. There's a lot of negativity that current fanciers are uh, exiting club and union racing to only do one loft racing. I think we should not see that as a negative. We're retaining a fancier. I think we, we should approach the one loft rate op race operators to start plowing back in the sport. I think Sandpo needs to incorporate all the one loft races in South Africa so that there's, uh, there's a, a manner of control, but also that it's starting giving back to the sport. Um, I think those are the important things as far as my views on South African pigeon racing. My advice to the youngsters or new entrants into the sport starting out, I think the first thing that I'll say is don't spend your money on stock birds. Unless you're a millionaire and you can spend really big money with the best guys in South Africa, do not buy stock birds. Um, you're much better off and you get much more bang for your buck if you go to an established champion that's got a proud record over many years and going to buy babies or even buy eggs. Uh, you get about five babies for the price of one stock bird and then it's not even a high price stock bird. So um, then race those babies, find a mentor that can, whoever you're buying those babies from, get his or her program, follow that program, their advice, and then after a season or two, maybe even three, you'll have a very good idea of what's working for you. Um, my advice is always to the guys, don't only go to one guy to get um, babies or eggs. Try and find three or four. Get yourself your racing team for the first year. Don't breed any of them yourself. Get them from outside. Race them. See what performs well and then breed from the performers. Go back to the guys who got the babies from that did perform and get more. And in that way, within three or four years, you, you can be very competitive. Um, we've got many examples of guys that we've helped to start that are already competing at the very top within three or four years from starting. So that would be my advice. So yeah, guys, thank you very much for visiting us again.